Hi, I'm Lincoln Eunice. I play Buddy Fraser in Barons. The reason I wanted to be a part of it is the story is so incredibly unique and original and nostalgic, even if you weren't born in that time. Um, and it's kind of, it feels like not only the project, but the content, it feels like this party you want to go to and you want to be invited to and you just want to immerse yourself in. And um, it felt like a really wonderful creative antidote to all the, the heaviness and darkness uh, in the real world. I can honestly say I knew nothing about the story. I, I didn't know, I obviously knew about surf culture and um, growing up in Australia, all the, the idiosyncrasies that might have been born out of it, but um, I had no idea about how these billion dollar industries were created um, and what started that and the, the kind of iconic characters that pioneered it. Um, so it was very exciting to do the research element prior to filming, but also to, to embody one of those characters um, and just immerse myself in this for a few months and um, hopefully offer a bit of a time capsule for everyone watching. Barons is incredibly easy to describe and incredibly difficult, which is a wonderful thing. It's unique, it's uh, something I don't think anyone's seen on TV before, which is quite cool to say. But for me, Barons is about the pioneers and parties that created the surf culture that we know and love today. And the characters along the way that inspired different elements of it. Um, Buddy is a walking surfing enigma. He is the life of the party. He is in his own world. He's charismatic. He's just intoxicating, yet pure. He's kind of uh, the personification of duality. He's one thing, but he's also the contradictory other element of it. Um, and when we see Buddy at the start of Barons, he is enjoying the spoils of his prior successes and uh, living the high life, just immersing himself in the Australian culture. He's on tour in his mind. Uh, so all the vices he tends to succumb to, he's embracing wholeheartedly. Uh, leaving all the responsibilities to Hunter and just going along for the ride. The interesting thing about Buddy for me is that he doesn't have one driving force. He is incredibly present. He, I think what drives him is soul searching, honestly, and that's why he in many ways is the most pure character in the show, especially when it comes to surfing. His whole heart and soul is in the ocean, in the spirit of what it is to be one with water and one with surf and the culture that invites everyone to be a part of it without taking ownership of any element of it. And he, I think that creates such a wonderful dynamic with Hunter who is very ambitious and very goal orientated and wants the success of the business whereas I think Buddy just is constantly in search of meaningful moments and relationships and being completely him all of the time. Yeah, for me with the wonderful ensemble that we have, there are so many characters and they all bring a different colour to the show. Um, but if you had to pick specific themes, I think for me and, and Buddy and the characters surrounding him, um, it's ambition, it's freedom and it's friendship. Um, Buddy certainly is just after that kind of euphoric 
constant ethereal experience from life and Hunter who is always by his side is, is all ambition. Rivalry comes in later because you know kind of mixing business and friendship is always a potentially toxic combination um, but I think for, for Buddy he kind of gravitates towards just wanting to be the best friend possible. He doesn't like being locked into rules, which is why he succumbs to so many vices. Um, but he also needs to be guided, and that's why Hunter is the compass to Buddy's kind of <laughs> directionless dynamic, you know. Uh, it is the most wonderful dynamic between Hunter and Buddy. Um, they each, uh, if there was a canvas of their relationship, they fill each other's colours and it all complements. And at the start, it's very harmonious and they've got a shorthand and it's just very easy going and very accepting. And I think as the series goes on, uh, Hunter, Hunter specifically matures quite a bit and solidifies what he wants from life, whereas Buddy is still in his searching phase. And that's when it starts to create conflict and, um, and become potentially toxic. Um, but Buddy is the fun, Hunter is the responsibility. Oh, it's been such a joy working with George. Uh, I met him a few years ago and I just thought he was such a vibrant, wonderful human. And being able to actually work together on set has, has consolidated that thought. He is a very intelligent, um, energetic human and he's a very talented actor. And I, from the first read through, I knew this was gonna be a very easy, wonderful, dynamic and it's really important for for this show especially because they carry such a majority of America and um, if you didn't have that dynamic it could be two different shows and it is in many ways but they they just complement each other so well and George and I have so much fun every day on set and we, we'd never kind of what I really loved was a lot of our choices and, and uh, a lot of the things we would find in the scenes would be in the moment and spontaneous and we'd never kind of rehearse or prepare but if someone went with something the other would catch up or offer something different and that is just the most wonderful experience, especially in acting. You just you, you want to know the other person's going to be game for whatever you throw, and and George was was always there. Kelly Fox, um, Kelly's a vivacious, fiery angel that kind of descends upon Buddy's life and. Um, completes him I think in many ways. I think he, he never really identified what he was searching for. He was always after that high, whether it was surfing or competition or um, drugs or traveling, but there was always something missing with him. And I think, I think he has lived a, a life of many fleeting kind of <laughs> relationships or romances and I think he meets his match with Kelly. She's, uh, they're, they are a power couple and they equal each other, which is so wonderful. It's like, she brings this kind of force and acceptance um, <laughs> to his life where he can kind of have his cake and eat it too. He's, he's deeply attracted to her. He is in love, I think, for the first time properly, but he can still be himself and go out and do his thing, but know he can come back. And 
be reined in in the way that he wants, you know. Megan is incredible. She's just such a wonderful, open human and um, she's done such a wonderful job with Kelly. Every day she'd turn up very present and prepared and again, I've been very fortunate in this show to be across from actors that will constantly surprise me in moments and, and to be surprised uh, while filming is, is the joy, that's, that's what you're always after and um, it creates for engaging TV and it creates for wonderful dynamics, especially romantically on screen. Um, yeah, she was, my, she was my, my partner, my bud, and um, yeah, it's been really wonderful. We had all these grand plans to hang out and bond and, you know, because obviously when you're working with an ensemble, you feel like that dynamic's really important, which it is. <laughs> and lockdown and COVID and just life stopped us being able to do that, except for a couple of surfs together. But it has just organically happened on set and it's been like, it's been the most amazing kind of blind dating experience <laughs> where we've all turned up and been like, oh, you're cool, you're cool, we're all cool. Let's just have fun. and and then notice that there's cameras on us and we're like, ah, oh, sick, it's all working, you know. Um, and I think that was the other thing. I feel like Liz and you and everyone created such an amazing skeleton and, and brief of what the show was. And then each actor has just brought so much color and depth to it. And it's been incredibly surprising and it has all worked. And it's just elevated the show each scene. And so I've kind of, every scene I've done, I've walked away, not only not worrying about whether we got the shot, but going, oh, that scene became this. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, you, that you guys managed to wrangle some incredible, not, not only actors, but incredible humans, yeah. I've never met a buddy, but I've met elements of him in many people. But to have one character that has so many contradicting uh, qualities, it, it just, it creates for unpredictability. You never know how Buddy's really gonna react, which makes him volatile, but he's never dangerous. He's a purist in, in every sense of the word, and yet he chases very easy, um, hedonistic uh, lifestyles. And, and so I think, I think the duality of Buddy makes him the kind of wonderful enigma that he is. One of the most engaging qualities about Buddy is that you, each character uh, gets to see a little element of him. Um, but no one gets the whole spectrum of who he is, not even Hunter or Kelly. Uh, the only time you actually see possibly all elements of him is when he's alone, especially in the surf. And that is such a uh, wonderful thing to watch a TV show where the audience will get these very rare private moments, but also know that no one else in the show in his reality will get to see them and that makes it both heartbreaking but so unpredictable and so you, you you constantly want to know more with buddy uh, and that's what has been so much fun to play is is getting is towing the line but never crossing it with with any certain person so much so much. Um, I, I can honestly say this is the most research I've done uh, and training I've done for any character or any show and it's been such a gift. Um, there was the, the whole culture around surfing which I had a, 
I had a pretty good grasp on because I grew up on the beach um, and moved around a lot, but surfing, especially this intensely, was, was quite new to me. And it's not a skill that you can learn in a very short amount of time, but I, I tried my best. So I spent a large majority of uh, pre-production in the water, just trying to learn how to surf also and then going home and learning about the time and then researching the boards the the iconic characters from that time kind of picking what elements of famous surfers i'd like to take from and and maybe try and imbue the character with um which was just so interesting and it really it, it pushed my brain it pushed my body it it's been amazing, it's such a adventure. And that was before we even started filming. And then on the other side, um, especially the back half of the series, you will see Buddy uh, decline in many ways and, and give in to his vices. And there was a lot of uh, stuff around addiction and um, substances that I, I really needed to uh, know about. And that was fascinating as well in a different way. What I learned about the 70s is that I wish I'd been born in that era and I wish I could go back there. <laughs> it's, it just, it was so much fun. It was so free. It was just, it was all the elements of life that I think people wish they could return to, especially at this moment in time. Um, people were more accepting, people were more open. There was no social media, there was no, uh, there wasn't as much judgment and it was a simpler life. And I think people, if, if there is some definition of happiness, it felt like that was the closest to happiness that uh, humanity has come to. And um, it just, it just, there were no rules. There were no rules. People, um, there were no rules, there were no cameras. The 70s were rebellious, they were disruptive, uh, they were just, it was just a cool time. And I really think this show captures that. And I, it, it's something that we, we, don't, we don't get to see very often. And that's saying something, because there's so many shows on TV today. And so to, to key in on something that is iconic and unique and weirdly nostalgic, even if you never knew that era, it's it's a quite a rare feat. It's it's funny. Each job each job is so different, um, and finding the character is always it can sometimes be quite a difficult task for actors. Um, I, I don't always know the character. Um, at the start of production, but one of the ways in is is the clothes, is the costumes, is the is the look um, or the feel of the show. And as soon as um, as soon as I put on some of the clothes that Marion Boyce uh, <laughs> found from God knows where, I, I immediately knew who Buddy was, and that has been such a, a joy uh, and a gift as well because as soon as you step into the flares or you step into the, the loose or high, the high shorts or the like loose tops or it, you just immediately are transported. So the costumes for me just, they played such a key part in knowing who Buddy is um, and it tells its own story. And so you see the arc of, of uh, Buddy's storyline in particular what he's wearing or not wearing at the start of the series as opposed to what he does wear at the end of the series tells a whole story with no words. And um, yeah, I think it's so informative for the audience visually um, and even subconsciously. But, it, but away from that, aesthetically, it's incredibly pleasing. It's so colorful, it's so dynamic and it just, it just lifts the whole show. And there are some incredible costumes in this show, especially the ladies.
Uh, I, I, I mean, I listen to such a wide range of music, but I did create a bit of a playlist at the start of Barons. Um, it was a lot of Zeppelin. It was a lot of Zeppelin and Steppenwolf. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just, as soon as you listen to any kind of hardcore guitar riffs, you, you transport it back there, yeah. Sean Seat is a delight and I have had the pleasure of working with him uh, a few times now and every time has just been such an adventure in a different way. He is, like Buddy, unpredictable. His shots and his choices and what he wants to focus on in the scene is always so original and not what I would expect. And it's it's you turn up to set excited and you know because he because he has an editor's brain he actually came from editing so he's editing the shots in while while he's directing so it's so, it's so comforting not to have to overthink and worry whether we got the shot or anything like that because he knows but then away from that he will usually have some kind of kooky take on each scene and um have a little objective in mind and just try, you know that <laughs> when you see him smile that you, and you've got that objective, um, you feel very good about it and you feel excited to watch it on screen because I never really know, I really, I don't know what to expect, but I know it's going to be good when I do watch it. Fadia is Mahabibti. She's also uh, Lebanese like me. Uh, she was wonderful. She was so prepared. She is so detail orientated. So we know, I, again, I, I can be an overthinker and I can be very uh, clinical and uh, want to know all the little parts. And for me, information is, is very comforting. And she always uh, knows the information and knows all the key elements of the scene. So we, I know that we will get all the important stuff that we need from the scene. And what that does is then create room for trying new things. It, it gives you room to explore and play. And um, yeah, having Fadia and Sean was such a, a wonderful kind of marriage of talent. Taylor is just, he's an ubermensch. He's just, I think we all had a bit of a crush on Taylor, even a man crush, I definitely did. Um, he, he's, he's a god of surf photography. You know, he, he knows, he, he's kind of this ethereal force. You watch his stuff and you just go, I, I don't know where your brain came from, but to be in your aura is such a special thing. And for me, it was, um, it was such an adventure, especially with the surfing stuff, because, you know, some days I, I, I wouldn't know what we were trying to capture and some, and just his way of directing, you would organically do it and then be really proud of yourself and then watch the footage and go, oh yeah, that's what we wanted to get. And you, I don't know how we, I don't know how we got there. And that, that's the thing with Taylor. It's like, like surfing and like the water and he's just smooth, he just flows and it all kind of creates this beautiful portrait of what we needed without even kind of needing to micromanage or change anything, yeah. Barons is rebellious, it is fun, it is disruptive, edgy, gritty, wholesome. It's exciting and it's unlike anything you will have seen on TV. I think what will surprise people about Barons is they will feel like they lived in a time even if they didn't. It's, it's a time machine, it's a time capsule. All you have to do is sit down, turn on your TV and you're transported to a better time and that's, that's quite a wonderful thing. It's, um, it's been a real joy creating it but I think it'll be even better watching it.
Buddy kind of opened this door and allowed me to walk through it and find these elements in myself that I always thought I had, but I, I wasn't sure. He's just, he, he forced me to be fearless in a lot of scenes and choices, um, to be free and to not care about things that I didn't need to. And I, I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older or, or because of this show or just an amazing serendipitous timing thing, but I, I, I genuinely feel like Buddy and Barons has changed me as a human for the better. And I just feel calm. I don't know whether that's surfing. I don't know whether it's, I don't know, life, but I just, for the first time in my life, I feel completely myself and at ease with the people around me and the world around me, even though it's quite a crazy time. And I think, um, I think that's the like joy de vivre and the beauty of Buddy is that he can just find the calm in the chaos. And that's, that's the true gift I've gotten from doing this show. So I think Buddy's been forced back into surfing. I think he probably has run out of money. I think he's back on tour. I think he's traveling the world. I think he's a cat of nine lives and he's lost about seven of them. So I think he is finding himself in dire circumstances and, and finding ways to get out of them. Uh, I think he's back to the excitement um, and the unpredictability of what we see at the start of season one. Uh, but of course, he'll, he'll find his way back to Hunter and probably Kelly and maybe get roped into more of the Hollywood that I'm sure she's surrounded by. Uh, and I, th I think that he will have matured in certain ways that he and Hunter can be the, the power duo behind whatever brand they take on, whether it's Lightwave or whether it's a whole new brand. Yeah, I'm excited.